Boeing is a company that's been around for decades, and they're essentially the number one company when it comes to this space. I don't really have one other competitor, which is Airbus. 2018 and 2019 have been rocky years for Boeing, and it's mainly because of the whole negative press around the 737 MAX, and of course the failures and tragic accidents that happened with those planes as well. And this of course resulted in the planes being grounded, the company looking into what caused the issue, and finally Boeing did come out and say that there was a fault in their planes and they are working on a fix for it. However, as it stands today, the planes are still grounded, and as a result, Boeing stock is also staying fairly grounded. This has affected several quarters of Boeing's earnings in terms of revenue and profits, and it may continue going into 2021 as well. But that's what I want to discuss today with you guys. I want to discuss why I personally own Boeing stock. And at these prices right now, I'm still buying Boeing stock. So I think that at current prices, despite all this negative news, despite the grounding, despite the falls, despite the issues, Boeing as a company is still offering incredible value at these prices. I have personally been buying Boeing in my retirement account. If you've been following that journey with me, you'll know that Boeing is one of my stocks in there. And as of recent, it's actually grown to one of my larger positions that account. So you'll see that in the next update video. But essentially when it comes down to it, I like what this company offers for the long term. And after looking deeper into this company, I think that despite the short term issues, this is a good long term hold. Guys, if you're a fan of Boeing or you're invested in Boeing stock, or considering investing in Boeing stock, consider dropping a like down below. Let's try to hit 200 likes on this video. It's a fairly easy challenge, but if you guys get that, I'll continue this series on why I'm buying X stock going into 2020. So in summary, there's really two main reasons why I like Boeing today. The first is that this company has the potential to be an incredibly high dividend payer in the next five to 10 years. And the second thing is that the stock is actually currently undervalued here based on historical metrics. So let's start off with number one, the dividends. Here's where the company stands right now when it comes to the dividend payouts. Ignore the payout ratio for a moment because we will address that. Their starting yield is respectable, close to 2.5%, and they have been growing this dividend for around 8 years consecutively. But what's more impressive, in my opinion, is that on average, they have raised this dividend by 28.66% in the last 5 years. That is a massive increase for any dividend company, let alone a company that is perceived to be struggling by the media. And now you may be saying, well, the last five years has been good for Boeing, but the last year is when the company truly suffered financially. And looking closely at the breakdown here, we can see that in just the last one year, they raised their dividend by 20.18%. Yes, this is lower than their five-year average. However, it's still a respectable 20% raise, which a lot of other companies are not able to do. And really what you need to do is ask yourself this question. If a company is struggling financially, why would they raise their dividend, let alone raise it by a massive 20%? And really, you got to ask yourself this question. If a company is struggling financially, you know, they're losing a lot of cash, they don't know what's going on with the company, will the company go bankrupt, all these kind of fears that are out there, why would they choose to raise their dividend, and not only that, but raise it by an additional 20%? Now, just to put things into perspective, Boeing has around 562.79 million shares outstanding. And in 2018, they paid out around $6.84 a share to shareholders. This means that in 2018, they paid out around $3.85 billion in dividends. Now, in 2019, despite all of their struggles, they raised this dividend by 20%, meaning they now pay out around $4.62 billion in dividends. So again, I ask you the question, I challenge you to really answer this and think about this. Why would a company that is supposedly struggling financially pay out an additional $770 million to shareholders year over year? They could just as easily not raise the dividend, maybe even keep it stable, save that $770 million, use it towards you know, fixing the airplanes or whatever it is that they need to do, and then maybe in a couple of years start raising it again. I think the answer is because they want to show investors that everything is fine, financially the company is still very strong, and they're able to raise their dividends despite this year's poor earnings. Now I'm sure some of you are wondering, well Nick, what about that 700% payout ratio? How is that even sustainable? And you're absolutely correct, and I'm glad that some of you guys picked up on that. It is not sustainable at those levels. However, when we dig deeper, we actually see that this is a short-term issue that will be resolved in the next year or so. Right now we can see that their earnings are very poor, coming in at $1.13 per share. 
But by this time next year, analysts are expecting Boeing to be back in business, bringing in over $20 per share in earnings. If this happens, and I along with other analysts believe it will happen sometime in 2020, that payout ratio will drop considerably, and even if they raise their dividend by another 20% from, say, $8.22 to $9.86, this would still put their projected payout ratio to around 47%, which is very sustainable. The problem and the ironic thing I see right now is that a lot of investors will just look at the high level, look at Boeing, look at their dividend, look at their payout ratio, see 700% and say, this is not for me, this is not sustainable, I'm not investing in Boeing because they're probably gonna cut their dividend. But like we just saw, when we dig deeper and we look at it on a forward basis, things will most likely go back to normal in the next year or so. Now my second reason for buying Boeing and still owning Boeing stock today is because I believe this company is still very undervalued. And looking at this, you may think I'm crazy here thinking that a company with a 4P of over 300 is considered undervalued. But hear me out. Once again, the data is skewed because of their performance and issues in 2019. Looking at 2020, things are looking to come back down to reality. And historically, looking at Boeing's PE and ignoring the skewed data from 2019, when it climbed up due to issues and all that stuff, on average, their PE is around an 18. This is respectable for a company like Boeing, but what makes it undervalued? Well, doing a quick calculation here based on the average EPS of analyst estimates of $20.86 a share and the current stock price of $327 a share, it gives us a 4P of around 15.67. This is a 15.67 versus an average of 18, which tells me that the market is underpricing Boeing severely currently because there's still uncertainty on whether they can actually achieve that $20 EPS in 2020. Now, even if we hit the low end of analysts' range with their earnings, it would yield them a 4P of 22. And on the high end, if they hit that, it'll yield a 4P of 11.5. So based on this range, I think around 16 is a fair estimate, which falls below our historical 18. And what's truly amazing, guys, in my opinion, is the free cash flow that Boeing brings in. In 2018, before all these issues, Boeing brought in around $13.6 billion in free cash flow, and that's cash that they can use to pay for anything that they want. This includes investments, dividends, growing the business, doesn't really matter. They can choose to invest that however they want. In 2019, they are at negative $1.61 billion in free cash flow, with one more quarter still waiting to be reported on, which could again be negative free cash flow. So I think it may be safe to say that 2019 will be a negative year in terms of free cash flow here for Boeing. Now, is this concerning? Well, maybe for short-term investors it is, but when we look at Boeing in a normal year like 2018, the company is capable of pulling in a lot of money when things are going right. And that's what I like to focus on because I believe that, say, in late 2020, maybe in 2021, things will be back on track for this company. Maybe it'll take a bit longer than expected, but regardless, I think in the end, things will be on track again for Boeing. And as a result, they'll be bringing in well over $10 billion of free cash flow every single year. And honestly, guys, this is where investing experience and investing in solid blue chip companies really comes into play. What I do when I'm actually thinking of opening up a really big position in a stock and building that out over time is I ask myself a few questions. So in Boeing's case, I ask myself, number one, is Boeing the leader in the industry? Yes, they are. Number two, does Boeing have a large moat? Yes, they do, and they only really have one other competitor here. Number three, is Boeing in an industry that's gonna be required in the next 10, 15, 20 years? Absolutely, and as the population of the world grows over time, people are gonna to wanna to travel more and more. And number four, is there a chance, a realistic chance, that in the next couple of years, in the short term, Boeing can actually go bankrupt from all these issues? In my opinion, based on their balance sheet, based on everything that's surrounding this company in terms of the fundamentals, I don't think that's a realistic possibility. Now, when looking at the charts here for Boeing, we can see that since 2018, we've more or less been stagnant with the stock. We opened in 2018 around $340 per share, and we're still sitting around that, although in recent days, we have dropped a bit below that after taking the screenshot. Now, despite a bit of volatility in the markets and despite the negative press the company has faced in the last two years specifically, this is still the case. So this tells me that investors are incredibly optimistic on Boeing eventually fixing these 737 MAX issues, and they believe that the company can actually move past this. It also tells me that the investing community is strongly supportive of Boeing, because if this sort of negativity happened to another company, I would not be surprised to see the stock down 30, 40, 50% from its highs. If you just think about it recently, we saw some large companies get hit pretty bad from negative press, you know, Facebook, Apple, 
Tesla. Those companies dropped, you know, 30, 40, 50 percent from their highs very quickly because of negative press and negative outlook. But Boeing here, despite everything, despite these poor earnings, despite everything that's really surrounding this in terms of negativity, it's still holding up pretty well. It's down around 25% or so, which in my opinion is pretty respectable and shows the resiliency of this stock. Now, before we close off here, I do want to say that there is risk associated with this stock, especially if you're looking in the short term. We just got news that Boeing will be halting production on the 737 MAX in 2020 until they get the green light for their planes to fly again. Now, this could be a big issue because as it stands today, Boeing is sitting with around 400 planes in inventory, which it cannot sell yet. On average, these planes cost around $100 million. So that's around $40 billion in revenue just sitting there that's unrealized currently. But now the question investors are probably asking is, is there a realistic risk that these 400 planes will become obsolete? And honestly, I think this is very unlikely, as even if it's a certain component that's you know, an issue that doesn't pass inspection, it can still be fixed and replaced without you know, trashing the whole plane and throwing that away. Of course, if there's further delays, it'll hurt Boeing, but to think that 400 planes just be thrown away is a short seller's pipe dream. I don't think that's gonna happen. Now, because of this backlog, it would take Boeing well into 2021 to get these out to their customers and realize the revenue and profits from this, which is why in the short term, there is still concerns. However, since I'm looking five, 10 years out for this company, it doesn't really matter to me if this revenue is realized in 2020, 2021, 2022. When I'm looking back at my Boeing investment in 2030, this would all be behind us. And I believe that this would be seen as a massive buying opportunity in the stock. Also, Boeing noted that they don't plan to lay off any employees because of this halt in production. And that's another good sign for the economy and company in general. Now, just a side theory that I have here is that, you know, a lot of people are seeing this as a negative for Boeing, but I think it's actually a smart move by them because what they've done is essentially said, you know what, our planes are good. We fixed the issue. We're just waiting for the FAA to approve this so we can move on. And the FAA is taking their time. You know, they're saying, you know, we're not going to rush this. We're going to make sure everything's good. And because of this, what Boeing Boeing has done now in retaliation has said, okay, you know what, we're going to halt production. And what this is going to do is it's going to affect the US economy. Boeing is a massive company and a lot of companies supply products and components and parts and everything to them. So if Boeing doesn't produce these planes, they're not going to be buying stuff from those other companies. And as a result, those other companies are going to suffer. And as a result, the US economy as a whole could potentially suffer. So essentially what this is doing is telling the FAA, you know what, We've done what we can, we fixed the issue. You need to speed up your process because we need to move on and get these planes back up in flight. That's just my theory, that's just how I'm seeing this. I think it's a smart move by Boeing. And although it's obviously affecting the stock price in the short term, again, I see this as a buying opportunity. And now you really know why I own Boeing stock and despite all the risks around this company, I still continue to buy Boeing at these prices. I believe the stock can easily be a $400 plus stock in the next few years. But despite that, I really like Boeing for the two reasons I mentioned today, which is of course the fact that it's undervalued at current prices. And the second thing, of course, is that they pay out a massive dividend and they're gonna be a strong dividend growth company, in my opinion, over the next few years decades. Guys, I hope you learned something from this. Let me know in the comment section down below if you're a Boeing investor and don't forget to drop that huge like as well because we got to hit these like goals to help the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for watching guys. Don't forget to invest positively and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.